that were remaining. 
they're going to get the number one pick. What they do with that selection, how impactful it is, we'll have to see. But it revitalizes their fan base and their future a little bit because this season, I have to imagine, was a disappointment for them. And then I also had the Brooklyn Nets. So, in a sense, yeah, I was off to on this. The Nets were not really that close to making it. They finished as what, the 11, but they were many games out. They, yeah, they finished 32 and 50. And the reason why I thought that they could be a playoff team is because Mikael Bridges had me fooled. This guy, as soon as he gets traded from the Suns to the Nets, he starts playing like Kevin Durant reincarnated. So I had full faith that he was going to make that jump. Um, everything that we've ever heard about the Brooklyn Nets organization and how they view Mikael Bridges is like superstar level. And so naturally in my mind, I was like, yeah, I think he's going to be at that star power. Maybe he's going to make an all-star appearance. And I don't want to jump the gun on anything. Obviously, there's still time. He is still young. But he is kind of just a glorified role player a little bit. That's what this season showed. He has bright moments, but it wasn't nearly as good as that stretch from when he got traded from the Suns. During that time, he was looking mighty impressive, and I don't know how much of that I can really attribute to Mikael Bridges underperforming or the coaching. The coaching is not that good. Uh, I don't think that the, the players like the coaching that much. Um, obviously, Cam Thomas, when you have a guy like Cam Thomas, and the way that they were utilizing him, it was not good. Uh, Shaq Vaughn, he was consistently scheming for Ben Simmons, and you know that Ben Simmons is going to play like 10 games in a season, so... Hopefully, that goes better for them going forward. And, yeah, I guess that is my mistake for believing in Mikael Bridges the way that I do. I still think that his future is bright. I think that he could be better, but I don't know if he really is the guy to lead a team into the playoffs like that. I think he's a good two or three, really. Third option, second option. I think is ceiling is a second option. I don't think he is that number one guy. They need a star. And now, after that, we have the will make the playoffs. Damn, these are teams that I said were going to make the playoffs. And you know what? I was four of six in this tier. Uh, I had, let me just read out all of them. I had the Memphis Grizzlies. I had the Sacramento Kings. I had the Dallas Mavericks. The New York Knicks. Cleveland Cavaliers and the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, three of these teams perfectly linked the Knicks, the Cavs, and the 76ers. They made the playoffs and they didn't really ascend to the finals. They didn't go, they didn't win the finals and they weren't play in teams. So those three were perfect. Dallas, I was saying confidently that they would make the playoffs and that out true. They made it as the fifth seed. I wasn't expecting them to have the postseason run that they did. So, yeah, once it got into the postseason, they were a bit better than I thought. But I'm still happy with my prediction of them making the playoffs. Uh, I wouldn't have looked at the West the way that it panned out this year and thought, yeah, Dallas is going to the finals. Even when it was all said and done, I thought that Dallas would lose to Minnesota or Denver. I did not think that they were going to actually make the finals the way that they did. So, yeah, good on them for having as good of a year as they did. Uh, but I'm happy with where I had them. I I don't have any real regrets about it. Sacramento, I wasn't that far off. They were one game out of the playoffs, uh, and they were on a better pace before Malik Monk got injured. Yeah, uh, they didn't make it, so I was wrong. But one game out plus, uh, it was an extreme competitive West. I'm not too upset about it because I was slightly off, but I'm still rocking with this pick. I, I think going back to before the season, had I looked at everything again, I still would make this pick. I still thought that the Sacramento Kings were going to make the playoffs. It's not like one of those cases where they really fell off. It's just the other teams got a lot better, so I don't blame them. And finally, the Memphis Grizzlies. This one, yes, I was significantly wrong about. I saw the Marcus Smart trade. I thought that the Marcus Smart trade was pretty good. I also thought that they, like, they were a top-tier team. They finished as a two-seed the year before, and I thought that the trade was solid, so I had no reason to doubt them. Obviously, J 
Joe was suspended 25 games. That should have been an indicator of maybe they won't for sure make the playoffs. But, yeah, they got off to a horrible start. They set an injury record and most injured team in NBA history. Joe came back, and in that span that he came back, they looked pretty good. Like, he had them looking like a playoff team. They went on a good run, and then he got injured for the entire year. So, yeah, I, even if he had managed to keep them afloat the way that he did at the end of, in that small time where he returned, they were still like a play-in team, so I had overestimated uh, their success without Ja. I thought that they would be able to do okay in that 25-game suspension, and they clearly could not. Obviously, Marcus Smart didn't play as much as I thought he would, or any of the Grizzlies for that matter. They were just incredibly injured throughout the entire year. But yeah, this was a huge miss, um, and that's gonna happen. There are gonna be teams that are just derailed, their seasons derailed by injury, and you can't account for that before the year. I can't just be like, oh yeah, I think that Jimmy Butler is going to tear his ACL and be out. Like, that's a horrible and crazy thing to predict before a season. So, yeah, when you, uh, I will take accountability for the first part of the season. I should have known that it would be worse the second half of the season where he got injured. I don't know. They could have been a play-in team, but we'll never know. either. I thought that they 
this was hurt. If you have a healthy Giannis Antetokounmpo heading into the postseason, I am going to give you that finals note. I think that his finals run in that year when they won it all was amazing, and that is his ceiling when he plays. This year he was playing pretty good. Dame, if Dame and him are healthy, there's nothing wrong with this pick. I obviously they lost in the first round, but that's with no Giannis and Dame missing games. If both guys were healthy going into the postseason, it would have made things very different. I think that their Eastern Conference Finals for sure. Finals, who knows? And then winning the finals, who knows? But I don't really mind that one. The Nuggets and the Bucks, I would store stick with them. The Lakers. It's hard when your team has LeBron James. And that guy has made the final so many times. It is hard to count him out, obviously. I'm not a Lakers fan. I don't really enjoy the Lakers. It's mostly because I have a really annoying Lakers fan roommate. He is loudly a fan of the Lakers in a in a way that makes me want to root for their lack of success. But even then, I have to recognize they have Anthony Davis, who is a top 10, 15 player in the league. And then LeBron. LeBron is one of the greatest winners when it comes to basketball. He has all those points. He has all those finals trips. And they were incredibly close last year. They were just one round away. So not horrible on my end for thinking that. And they did fine in the early half of the season when they won the in-season tournament. They just ran out of gas and then they didn't make any trade deadline moves and they got a bad matchup. Uh, yeah, they couldn't climb back in to uh, the regular playoffs. Then they had to play Denver and Denver owns them. So that was their kryptonite this year. They probably would have had to go through Denver anyways and have not been able to beat them. my rationale, my logic behind it. LeBron James is on your team. You have a team that almost went to the finals last year. How can I count you out? And then I have my worst prediction of this year, which was the Golden State Warriors can win the NBA Finals. And this is the furthest off the mark. They finished as the 10th seed, and then they lost in their play-in game. So, they were a lottery team. And so, on one hand, if you look at it purely from a record standpoint, they did improve. They were one round away from the Eastern Con from the Western Conference Finals. Two years ago, they just won the finals. And they got better. So having their ceiling higher than last year is not technically that bad of a prediction. But the West was just incredibly hard. I was not accounting for the West being as difficult as it was. And the Warriors, they're kind of washed. As much as it pains me to say it. Uh, obviously, if you have Stephen Curry on your team, I'm going to give you that nod as well. Giannis, LeBron, Curry, I have this level of respect for them as guys that can really just will their way to the finals because I saw it happen. Same with Jokic. These four teams, they have like super, superstar level guys that are MVP dudes. And yeah, it sets them apart from the rest of the pack. I didn't expect the Warriors to be so unclutch. They really are not good in clutch situations the way they used to be. They cannot put games away. I think they had like 12 blown fourth quarter leads this year. Had they retained all of those, they could be like a top four seed in this West. And, uh, yeah, the roster just is not really that good anymore. Uh, Kevon Money is falling off. His knees are not as good as they were. He's not the same guy as he was two years ago. Clay Thompson, not the same guy that he used to be two years ago. Draymond Green, he is a loose cannon, uh, to put it lightly just not everyone is in that same level of craftsmanship that Steph Curry has retained. Steph Curry, like, he played perfectly fine this year. Nothing about his play limited the Warriors. It was just a surrounding cast. Their roster is short. They did not give the young guys as much minutes in the beginning of the year. People are getting old, so they're bogged down on money. They are trying to keep the core together, but that's also 
suffer because of the contracts. You know, if the Warriors give Clay another thirty million dollar deal, it is going to be extremely painful to watch us go thirty-eight and what forty-four. <laughs> it's going to be rough. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I will. I'll likely make more NBA videos in the future. Right now. This is, this is it for the foreseeable time. Uh, probably won't come up again for a while until we have like a free agency opening or the draft. Yeah, it's probably the draft and free agency recap. Most likely day one of free agency. So if you're doing the basketball content, stick around for those too. I might do an uptick in some football stuff eventually. Uh, mock drafts for fantasy football, fantasy football advice. Um, a long time ago, someone asked me to make a series of explaining how football works, and I have never gotten to it. That is something that I would like to get to, so, yeah, if you're interested in learning how sports are played, then I might dive into that. Other than those, it might be funky times in the future. I will be experimenting more with traditional ASMR forms, uh, things of that nature, so... Let me know how you feel about that, how you feel about everything, and yeah, take care. So thank you for watching, and I will see you.